Justin Charles, Collins on silent, please, just call again. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time this morning to come down to the uh, press conference. Uh, we'll get underway in just a second. How we're going to play this is I'm going to ask uh, Sir Ian to say a few words and then also give an opportunity to Simon uh, also to say a few words. We'll then open it up to questions. Depending upon what questions we have and what time we have then available, we'll do our best to do some one to ones. Uh, bearing in mind we do have a, a sponsor uh, just along the corridor waiting for us at 12.30 right there. That's how we'd like to go, so Ian, if you want to keep on. Yeah, uh, first of all, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, it's exciting times, um, a challenge for myself, something that's new, uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to. Um, I believe that the side which has pretty much stayed together, which I think shows their intent. Uh, we think we can, uh, we can get back into Division 1 very quickly, that's our target. And also to work and make the whole club more accessible, not just to the public, but to families, um, communities. We've got a lot of resources around us here. Northumberland uh, has produced many fine cricketers over the years. Durham's record is there for everyone to see. Very proud. I started my, or ended my career here when they started, uh, back in '92, three, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And the people up here deserve to have a good team with the help of the council, and with the ECB's help, um, we're pretty much starting on a reasonably level field, apart from 48 points, which is another discussion for another day. But. Uh, no, very pleased, very honoured, and uh, looking forward to the task ahead. Simon? Thank you. I think it's great to see uh, Sir Ian here. Uh, the, from the Council's point of view, uh, we're here to back for Durham uh, in everything uh, that we do, whether that's our sports teams, whether that's our events, whether that's our businesses, companies moving into Durham or expanding. We will always uh, support everything that goes on in Durham. Uh, as, as, as good as we can uh, and, and just that view out there Lumley Castle uh, being shown around the world uh, I think uh, does a lot for the image of County Durham and for the North East uh, I think it looks fantastic it gives us that coverage right across the piece uh, and it presents uh, an image of the North East uh, that we got to work with that we now need all to get behind uh, to, to work with uh, Sir Ian and the rest of the, uh, uh, the cricket club uh, to get Durham back where it belongs and to move this forward. Uh, that's what we need for County Durham and that's what we need for, for the whole of the North East because this is very much the North East's cricket club. I'm very happy as, uh, as Ian, I'm sure, to, to, to answer any other questions uh, that come in in terms of the, uh, the, how the council fits in with this. Uh, but from our point of view, we're, we're very much uh, here to support, uh, as we can, uh, getting the cricket club back where it belongs. Okay, okay. thanks, fellas. Questions? That's one of the quickest presses. <laughs> <laughs> very happy with that. That's fine. They all, like, all go this easily. It'll be great. <laughs> Can I ask you, you said that the point of eviction is a, a discussion for another day. How would you get over the, any sense of resentment that there might be up here, that, where the children have been harshly treated? Well, I live just down the road, so I'm well aware of what uh, the views are of the public and have been for the last 30 years. Um, I, look, it, it, there's two ways to look at it. You can sit here and whinge and go, well, we're minus 48 points, or I can turn around and say, that's two wins, and the team are more than good enough to get those two early wins, then in Division 2, they will be, in my opinion, probably the best side by a distance playing in that division, and it's down to the players and a bit of luck with the weather. But, as look, we could be playing minor counties. We're not. We're playing, still playing in first-class cricket, and we have a club, and I think a club that will prosper. 
Turing, can you give us a feel for how much you go to the a lot of uh, commitments? Yeah. <laughs> how much time you will be able to devote to it? Will it be a certain amount of time per week, or will it be? I mean, will it essentially be a figurehead role? No, 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 no. It won't be a figurehead role. Uh, I will be involved um, in this modern day, even if I'm on the other side of the world, we can all pick up a phone and we can have a conference call. So there's, lot, there's ways around it. Obviously, uh, from my point of view, uh, I didn't know I was doing this until just a few months ago, uh, a couple of months or so ago, and my diary's full for probably 18 to 24 months in advance. So we will have to shuffle things around, but my intention is to be here as often as I can. Can you give us a feel for how it came about as well, please? Um, I think uh, the conversations I had with the ECB um, and with uh, Durham, um, it just seemed a natural progression. Uh, could I help? Would I help? Yes, I will and I am, and I'm going to. So, And anyone that knows me knows that I'm, I'm not going to go in this half cock. It'll be, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's something that I'm proud to be doing. Some, I love the area, I'm part of the area, I regard myself as a local. Um, so, yeah, I'm here, I'm here, and uh, hopefully I'll be sitting here in a year or two years' time and we're lifting that trophy again, because we're, we're good enough. Sorry. The record, the record's there for everyone to see. Since we joined uh, First Class Cricket, just look at the test players we've produced. So there's a lot, a lot to fight for here. Does it almost feel like something of a call when you mentioned you were here? Right at the start, and it's almost like it's gone full circle now, and you're back here for the start of another journey. Almost. Well, I have to tell you, there's a lot of people I know who are quite surprised that I am sat here. <laughs> um, uh, but th then the ones that really know me knew that I would have a go at it. Um, why not? You know, I've uh, been in the game all my life. I've seen it from a player's point of view. I've seen it from an England player's point of view. Uh, and from uh, my point of view, I think I can give a fair bit back. Uh, and open doors and who knows uh, for many opportunities. You know, it's a wonderful ground and uh, we want to see it full. And then how much pride did you take? You mentioned the amount of England players and then just mm. seven days ago Ben Stokes got that, that contract in the IPL. How much pride do you take in that as a guy who was here kind of as the figurehead of this at the, at the start of the club's journey? Uh, look, uh, <laughs> when you see someone like Ben, actually I was with him the other evening and I told him that the chairman will be expecting a drink bought for him on this occasion now. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm very pleased for Ben, and I think it's great for the North East. Uh, we are producing some fantastic players, and uh, we will continue to do that because the infrastructure is here, and we can expand on that and make it even more successful. I do believe there's a lot of talent up here. Uh, and as for Ben, he's box office. That's why he went for what he went for. and. Uh, he plays every game with, uh, an in uh, his intention is to play out, but not just play, to win. And that's the kind of guy, he's uncomplicated, what you see is what you get. And uh, he's a breath of fresh air, so I wish him all the very best. And he's very loyal to Durham County Cricket Club. Yeah, what sort of uh, safeguards can be put in place to ensure the club doesn't end up in the same position again? In five well, years this is exactly what we've been discussing this morning. Simon, do you want to have a, explain that? Um, well, it, it's very important that we're not in that same position in, in five or ten years' time. That's mm. the starting point for all of us, mm. and that's why w those conversations have already been taking place and, and obviously will continue taking place, and we're confident things are on uh, a, a firm footing now moving forward, so we're very confident mm. about that. Yeah, and we as a clubber, uh, we, we sometimes you can bury your head in the sand, and or you can put throw the bones at the bottom of the garden, but eventually they have to be done, it has to be tidied up and cleaned up. And we know it's, it's not going to be an easy task by any means, but it's one that is very, very doable. And we're confident collectively, we're slowly putting a board together, there's no rush to do that because we want to get the right people uh, and the right mix and uh, we'll make it work. It's, it's, look, you can, <laughs> if you don't have a go, you never know. So we're here to give it a go. Players hopefully will do their stuff out there, which will make it a lot easier for us, and uh, we can see Durham back where it belongs. Have you had people, have you had companies and sponsors interested in? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we've had a great response. Um, very positive. The people are very positive. Just you walk into, get dragged into Sainsbury's or 
Marks and Spencers with, with my wife carrying the shopping, and it's amazing the response from people. Yeah, we're really pleased you're doing it. Good on you. We'll, you know, we're all going to get behind you. So if that continues, um, I don't see any reason whatsoever why we won't succeed. There's some pretty big decisions coming up for English cricket. Mm. A few months now, you're a county chair, mm. and obviously put across the box and vote for these things. Mm. Where, do you, where do you stand on the new T20 tournament? Uh, I, look, I think it's uh, exciting. Um, I, I think there's still debate about how it's going to be done. I don't think it's going to be cities, I think it's going to be areas. And we hopefully here in the North East expect to be part of it in one, one way or another. And uh, how that all develops, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I think we've got to be realistic. Uh, it is uh, financially very sensible to do it. And if we do it properly and you do it for a hit in the summer, um, a little bit look at the success of the Big Bash. It's probably the biggest tournament now, probably regarded as a better tournament than the IPL. Uh, so we want to take a little bit from the Big Bash, a little bit from the IPL, and come up with the right formula. And, this, and, I, and I think the work has been going on, and I cannot believe that any chairman of any club cannot see the benefits of it. I really don't. How important is it to for Durham to get the right deal as part of that uh, set up? When, when you talk yeah. about it, it being an area, I mean, yeah. there could be a danger that you get frozen out of here potentially. No, no, no. We won't be playing it either. Uh, we won't be playing any international games in May either. So, um, <laughs> no, no. Uh, absolutely. Look, you know, I, I, I don't quite know how the franchises is still uh, being played with and looked at, uh, but I expect us to be involved here. Yeah. How important would it be for the, the Northern franchise to be involved? In the well, there's going to be a Northern franchise, and uh, there's bound to be. If you look at the divisions, you're going to have the South West, you're going to have London, you're going to have the Midlands. So there's obviously going to be a Northern franchise, and uh, we expect to be part of it, yeah. There's a very strong local cricket tradition here, isn't there? We've got lots of players produced, you know, to, show before. You know, to have the players produced and then play for their local team would be important. Wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely, Northumberland's a great breeding ground. I mean, in fact, they don't usually want to give us the players because they'd rather them have up there playing. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'd point out to them, well, they could actually be the next Ben Stokes. Uh, so, all right, we hadn't thought of that. So we're, we're trying to tap into all the resources that we can. And it's a, it's a two-way thing, not one way. So you've not always been a massive fan of T20 yourself, have you? But you can see that now that... Oh, look, I'd have loved to play it. I mean, short game's a good game, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's entertainment. And, but I see T20 as a vehicle to bring in people back into the grounds. And to and at the end of the day, the flagship will always be and should be Test cricket, the five days, because that's the real test. Where test cricket, it ebbs and flows. It's not just the physical side of it; it's the mental side of it. Uh, it is the ultimate test for any cricketer. And anyone that says they don't want to play Test cricket, really, the reason they're saying it is they're probably not good enough, and that's the truth of it. So. Um, no, T20 has its spot, and I think it's you know you want to see kids here, you want to see the ground full, and I think the T20 that will be coming up in the next year or so, I think will do that. But I think it will do it for every ground because I think that if it's marketed properly and you get the right players, the best players, um, and you you might even have a transfer system, you, you, or you could say uh, we want uh, Ravi Papara from Essex in the Northern franchise, we can sign him for six weeks or whatever it is. I, I can see that. Making it even more interesting, not, not, not an IPL auction, but you can certainly move players around. So there's a lot of uh, excitement to come. I think it'll be it's going to be fun to be part of it. Given the um, <coughs> size of the salaries being offered in T20, particularly in the IPL, we talked about Ben Stokes. Um, do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing in terms of attracting people to go through the sort of stages that are necessary to get to be? Well, he's getting for he's getting for the IPL what uh, most guys going to China to play football are getting in a fortnight mm. for a fortnight's wages. So w cricket needs to move, and I think that players deserve the rewards. It's a precarious living. You can have an injury and never play again, and I think people realise that now. You know, you go back to what Kerry Packer did and revolutionised the game, and everyone had to wake up. We've got to move with the times, and uh, if the rewards are there then the cricketers should be as entitled to it as a footballer or any other sportsman. Do you think players who want to play T20 have still got to go through the, the other stages and become first class cricketers or, and play the other football? Well, I don't think many do uh, any other way. I think you've still got, you've got to have a basics of the game. Um, T20, they improvise, they do it. I, 
not quite sure how they would have played those scoop shots to Malcolm Marshall, Andy Roberts, Joel Garner and Colin Croft, but uh, not to mention holding, he was quite quick as well. So you improvise according to the conditions and the games, but at the end of the day, to play in any uh, competition at the highest level, uh, you will. I think most guys will have to come through the first class game. So therefore, it's important to reserve the first class game as it is, and, and Test cricket too. Well, Test cricket must. If Test cricket goes, cricket goes, in my opinion. And does does Ben almost embody that because he's got that contract on the back of of his performances? Name, his name in, in scoring two hundred and fifty in no time for Test match, etc. Yeah, keeps him pinching all the records. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. And I, I love watching him do it. And of course, he's come through the way. That's the way he came through. The local boy, you know, he came all right. It's New Zealand background, but he, he can't even remember New Zealand. But uh, and it's, but he is as Durham as you get, and uh, that's the kind of player that uh, he comes through the ranks. He, and that's the opportunity, and uh, that if you've got those opportunities and you've got that carrot dangling, then you're going to get more and more players wanting to have a go at it. When the ECB are making changes such as the new 2020 competition, mm. do you guys as a club feel in a, a slightly weak position because of what's gone the last few months as well? No. The ECB's do, you, do you think they need you as much as, as you need them because of the resources? Well, absolutely, because as I say, just look what we've produced over the years for, for the England game. So, uh, yeah, there's, no, I don't think uh, we will be on the same level playing field as everyone else. And that's why the council and myself and the uh, other board members and uh, people here involved with cricket in this area have been discussing and how to make sure it does work. Um, and it will. It'll work. We'll be fine. Does the fact that Durham's got a, a long-established academy system drawing on the other counties around that, is that put you in a good position too in terms of regional academies if it goes in that direction? Well, you, you don't reinvent the wheel, do you? And we've got it here, and we've we've uh, we're proven and tested, and we're producing players. So the Durham Academy will always be here. It would be r ridiculous not to be. Have you had any sort of indication of how close the club was going to go into the wall? Uh, I think it's safe to say it was pretty close. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Uh, but that's why we needed to get our heads together. We needed to wake up and smell the coffee because at the end of the day, you can't bury your head in the sand and think it's all going to be sorted out, the ECB will just keep paying the bills and what have you. It doesn't work like that. And we don't want it to work like that. We want to be independent. We want to have a say in our future and what we do with this ground and, and that's all down the line. That's in years to come, but the first priority is getting ourselves back into Division 1. Do you ever, do you ever seen yourself in this position sort of five years ago? No. Being, no. <laughs> you get, you get associated with this no, I, I didn't. Um, but actually, uh, the more I've got into it, I've been learning things about corporate law, which is mind-blowing, really, for me. But, uh, not very well, I hasten to add, but um, it's a whole new world. It's a new challenge. You know, I'm 61 years of age. I've had a great career, enjoyed it all, and in, I love working for Sky, so I'm involved with the game. Uh, so it's just, why not? Why not give it a go? And the more I thought about it... You know, it's a new challenge, and I like challenges, and I usually respond, so hopefully we'll respond here. It was only really, I guess, the, was it the precarious situation the club was in was it, was it really grabbed you? Well, also being part of the first team that played and walked out into that field representing Durham, to be part of that team and to see what the club has achieved, who would have thought they'd have had be in any kind of position? Uh, nothing like this you'd have expected. Everyone thought, you know, Durham, no one's going to really bother. Be, they'll be playing in Darlington. They'll be playing all around the counties as they were. Far from it. Yeah, we've got a, a magnificent infrastructure here. We've got a beautiful ground, and we want to see it full again. So what was the one thing that, that triggered you? Challenge. Challenge. Like a challenge. And this is a challenge, but it's a good challenge and one that we can win. What response have you had from the former teammates and your current broadcasting? Oh, no, actually, we've got a few players. Uh, don't forget me, don't forget me. I'll come up to the northeast. I love it up there. So we'll have no problems. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a few lined up. Did you have a word with Keaton Jennings? Sure Keaton was no problem at all. He was only too keen. And um, I knew his father. That's how old I am. And uh, But, uh, no, Keaton uh, had such a great year, 100 on debut. He didn't need much persuasion. Uh, Probably got a big moment to keep him at the club. Yeah, yeah, we were very happy to. We were very pleased with that, and I think everybody in the northeast is very happy that he's still here, 
you know, he's made a big impression. You, you mentioned the, the huge area around here and this being the local group mm. for, a, for a big community. How do you go about connecting with those people, do you think? And that's a question for both of you. Is there any, any plans in place as to, as to how you go about that? Well, again, we've just been talking about that, and it's absolutely crucial to mm. connect with communities across County Durham and across the whole North East. Uh, and why didn't that? Because, as, as we all know, uh, there's, there's a huge area here of, of northern England into Scotland where this is the nearest first class cricket ground, this is the nearest international <coughs> cricket ground. Uh, and I know from being resident uh, in Chester Street, the people that come here uh, every year, that the, the thousands of visitors that come from across the country, from across uh, other parts of the world. Uh, but the, the, the um, community involvement is absolutely crucial, and certainly from a council point of view, it's very important to us as well. So we need to get everything connected so that the, the vibrant cricket scene that we've got in County Durham and across the North East is fully connected in with Durham County Cricket Club uh, and vice versa. Uh, and, and we need to work on that to mm. make sure that works for everybody right across County Durham, right across the North East. There are great facilities here. So this place should be operating 11 and a half months of the year. And that's what we intend to do. Simon, you, you mentioned earlier the, the, the visibility that this, this place has given to, to the North East as a whole. Clearly the, the best way to do that is through international cricket and there's not now going to be a, as, as much of that. Is it, how, how big a blow was, uh, was that for you guys? I think the important thing is that we do still have international cricket in terms of one day internationals and looking ahead to the World Cup as well uh, in a couple of years time. Uh, it was, I think, I'm right in saying it was the World Cup originally back in the late 90s which was the first international cricket that, that was held here. Uh, so I think it's really important that we held on to, to that level of international cricket. Uh, we all know that tests have proven more of a challenge here. Having said <coughs> that, I have to say that the atmosphere and the results in the Ashes match against Australia was just a fantastic occasion for the whole North East. The North East had never seen that before, and I still think that was one of the real sporting highlights uh, for, for the whole of the North East. That was just uh, tremendous, that whole four days. But having one day internationals is a big deal for us and continuing to have that is a big deal for us. So I believe we will still have that profile and we've got to slowly build ourselves back into a position uh, where we can bid for games into the future. But I think you know, we've, we've kept hold of those international uh, dates. Yes, there won't be maybe quite as many as there has been, uh, but, it, but it's important that people understand that we do still have those, uh, you know, we do still have those one-day internationals here. We are still very much on the map as, a, as an international ground, the northernmost uh, international ground. It's a very proud uh, thing for County Durham, for the North East to have that. Uh, and we've got to make sure we, we hang on to it to, to sell out those games, which I have to say we have done. That The one-day internationals have tended to sell out. Uh, uh, they, they have been at, at you know, decent times of the year, by and large. Uh, and, and we've managed to do that. So I, I think there's enough there to move forward uh, as we take the club forward as well. And then who knows, in, back, you know, in, in, in terms of the future. Yeah, and also common sense must prevail uh, to a degree. Um, there's no point in, last year we had a test match here in May with everything that was going on in the football world around us here, the Sunderland surviving, Newcastle getting promotion, Middlesbrough, everything that was going on. Uh, it's very difficult to pull people in at that time of the year. There's a lot of competition and not a great population. It's not like London, where you've got 25 million people in Greater London. It's not like that. And so we, you know, common sense must prevail. And there's, we wouldn't accept a game. I wouldn't take a game as chairman or advise against it if we were offered it in end of April, beginning of May. There's no point. There's absolutely no point. It's not fair. You're not giving us a chance. Uh, so that's something that we will. I'll press hard for. You mentioned, word, you mentioned the word fairness. I know you talked to me on about the, the points about it. Mm. But there will be certain restrictions, won't there, for you as you start to get the club moving in the right direction. How long do you expect, expect to, to you have some freedom to do what you want to do with the club? We're, we're pretty free to do what we want now. Yeah, absolutely.